Hey everybody, this is Franco, and I'm going to do some bench testing of the Stepper Online CL57Y closed loop stepper drivers. I have these uh, NEMA 24 motors. These are 5 amp motors, and it's hard to... My information's wearing off the stickers because these have been jumping around on my table. You'll see why here in a minute. Um, NEMA 24 motors, I think they're 566 ounce inches, I can't remember. These are pretty good size motors. Uh, driving it with the Centroid Acorn, this is a great test because this board is really fast and it can drive pulses way faster than any stepper driver can read them, so good test. Uh, in the description of this video there will be some links and uh, you know if one of the links is to Stepper Online and if, if you are shopping for stepper motors, I'd encourage you to check out their website. If you would like to support my YouTube channel, follow the link in the description of this video because if you use that link and you decide to make a purchase, that uh, Stepper Online will support my YouTube channel. But if you don't want to do that, that's fine. Uh, but I just wanted to throw that out there. Okay, so I'm not going to get into wiring or anything like that, but we're running a 400 watt, 36 volt power supply into two of these drivers. Each of those motors is up to uh, 5 amps each, so so total max draw could be 10 amps on what is uh, an 11 amp power supply. So uh, cutting it, I, I don't want to say close. It'd be nice to have a little bit more headroom than that, but it'll work. The uh, We're driving off 24 volt signals, which is nice. 24 volts is less prone to electrical noise. Drivers are set to 4,000 pulses per revolution. So 4,000 pulses per revolution, in my opinion, is a real good place to be when you're building CNC machines. You'll get really nice smooth motion that way. 4,000 pulses per revolution. And I have the Acorn configured in the background, so inches per minute is also equal to revolutions per minute on those motor shafts. So that's a very unusual configuration. You wouldn't normally have that as you're building your machines. But I did that just for uh, to make it easy to have a point of reference. So let's fire this thing up and let's see what happens. So what I've done, I'm trying to do this one-handed. It's not easy, but I'll do the best I can. I have a program here, and I'll I'll tell you in ad, in advance. Well, let, let me just show it to you. It's easier to show it to you. I have written a little program. It's a macro program. Basically, what I'm going to do is run this motor 2,500 RPM. I'm going to go 100 inches in one direction, and then I'm going to come back 100 inches. And what, I'm, what I want to see is that the motor stops and starts in the exact same place. So 2,500 RPM, which is ridiculously fast. You're never, ever going to want to your, drive your axis motors that fast, but, but that's the test. So in a perfect world, you do this on a, a built, configured machine with an indicator. You would see if you're losing steps. I don't have that set up yet, so you, you can see I basically I have green tape and marks. And the idea is we want to see those marks line up with each other every time the shaft stops. So we're going to run this thing super screaming fast, 2500 RPM, and we're looking for lost steps. So let me, let me set this sideways and start this program, and we'll see what happens. So what you can see is the line keeps repeating. We go positive 100 back to zero. And we are not losing any steps. So most of you are not going to build big, giant, enormous machines that move hundreds and hundreds of inches. But I did this because I wanted to give it plenty of opportunities to lose steps. So over those uh, 100 inches, it has a lot of opportunities to lose steps and it's not doing that and you can also hear the motor and like I said this is you're not really going to run your servo or your axis motors at this RPM you're going to be more like here let me slow it down it's 
there's 1200 RPM. Chances are this is going to be where like your max feed rates are. Oh, oh I hate it when that happens. So if you want to hear the motor, that's what it sounds like. Hopefully you can hear it. So that's, I'll call that a pass. So I'm going to show you now what happens when you, oh yeah, it gets a lot louder now because I'm laying on the table. This workbench is acting like a resonator. So here's what happens, put it back up to its full speed, 2500 20, RPM. I'm going to increase the feed rate until it freaks out. And there it is, it freaked out. So, 2600 inches per minute, 2600 RPM, it's not happy. And you see our marks don't line up anymore. We are losing steps. And now it's getting really weird. So that's what happens when you push a motor a stepper beyond its capabilities. So it, it lost its position now, so it's, it's not going to come back to its mark. But I'm impressed. 2500 RPM, and that thing is still able to uh, repeat and hold its position. Now there's only one more test that I would do, and let me pause for a second and then we'll do that. Okay, this next test, we're going to do the opposite. Instead of going screaming crazy fast, we are going to go slow, like super slow. So my feed rate that I've set is 0 0.01 inches per minute. So this is crazy super slow. But in, in addition to losing steps at those really high velocities, I've also found that when your your steppers aren't working right, you might lose steps at these really super slow velocities. So let's turn this program on and I'll show you what I do. So this wants to go back to zero, so we'll let it go back to zero. And now you see what it's doing. It's just barely pulsing, right? And what I do I know it sounds ridiculous, but I'll, I'll take this motor and I'll hold it right up to my ear. Or I'll put my ear right down to the motor. But what, I, what I'm looking for is every time the display, the DRO changes on the Acorn CNC12, the Centroid CNC12 display, what I want to do is I, I want to make sure that this motor is taking a step. So I, I literally, you can probably see it in the reflection of the screen, I'll hold this thing right up to my ear and it's doing it. It I can hear the motor pulsing every time the DRO changes. Now here again a more scientific way of doing this would be build your machine and use an indicator to see does the indicator move as your DRO is moving. Um, another way I could do this is write a program where I, I tell it to make one complete revolution and uh, I turn it on, you know, start with the marks in alignment, let it run, and it should come back with the marks in alignment. Now, I, I'm not going to do that because I don't have, like, that much time to make this video. But, but I can tell you, I can hear the pulses. It's pulsing. Pulse. 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 So I have a lot of confidence that it's not missing steps. So those are my tests, and I'm pretty happy. I am pretty happy with how both of those went. Um, I'm 
I like these drivers, I like these motors, and uh, I think they're going to do a pretty good job. I'm just going to go back to the other program here, just so you can hear them run while I close out this video. Uh, I think it was this program. Here we go. And I'm going to put it at a more typical feed rate, so not 2,500 inches per minute. Oops. Nine hundred. That's pretty good. So there's the motor on a wooden workbench. So that's that's working like a resonator. So you can hear what that sounds like for those of you that are interested in the sound. I'll just set it over here. Just. So that's kind of what it would probably sound like if it was bolted to a machine. So there you go. CL57Y from Stepper Online. I'm liking these drives, I'm liking their motors. And uh, if you watch my other videos, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying the process of shopping on the Stepper Online website. They seem like they just have everything really well organized, and uh, they have pretty good tech support. Also, you guys know I'm a big fan of the Centroid products. Same thing. Good products, good tech support, easy to deal with. And folks at Precision Matthews, obviously, big fans of them too. If you're shopping for a machine, that's the first place I would go. There's some other good places out there too, but I would, I would definitely at least give them a look-see and check out their stuff. All right, thanks for watching. Have a great day.